Welcome to Pop X Cast, a podcast that brings together the worlds of pop culture and science fiction in a way that breathes life into our inner child. From nostalgia to all things retro, pop culture news, film reviews, and the retro rewind, we explore all realms of geeky goodness. So find your comfy spot, top off your glass, and don't forget those pizza rolls in the air fryer because it's time for Pop X Cast. Excelsior, welcome guys. This is Pop X Cast, episode 140. What? 140? What? Didn't we just celebrate like 100 like Dear yesterday? Goodness, we're getting old. I feel old. I, I actually, yeah, I kind of agree with you on that. <laughs> I kind one. of feel that. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that this young spry lad down here uh, below us is not feeling that old. Austin, are you feeling, how are you feeling today? I don't know, man. I. I watch so many things like my eyes are slowly getting worse and worse. I am starting to feel old. Is that bad? His Something? brain is his brain is melting. It's bad. It's it's, it's good. like I'm going to have to change really? my prescription because my eyes are going out. No joke. So like my body is withering away. Tried to play frisbee the other day. My knee is shot. Like what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Wait till you hit forty. Totally Wait till you hit forty-two, bro. Wait till you hit forty-two. Totally just, relate you know, to that. It's, it's, it's not, not good. It's, it's not it's bad. Fun. It's not a good bet of roses yep. for anybody. Uh, well, speaking we're of, we're breaking down. I uh, know, man. We're getting old, <laughs> but you know what? We are. We're continuing on with the nerds, and um, it's it's good to be a nerd as a forty-two-year-old. I'm just going to say that, right? Now. <laughs> yes, yeah. Sir. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty yes, cool. Yes, yes. It's pretty cool. But well, man, the chat room is 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 hopping right now. I what? I, I want to give some shout outs right at Hi, the top friend. of the show. Uh, look at this. We got I Talk Marvel, John Poffenbarger's in the house, Alicia's in here. Uh, we've got The View with a with Drew, The View with Drew. Yeah, uh, I got SJ McFly, our neighbor next door. Hello, Shane. How are you doing? Hi, neighbor. Won't you be <laughs> my neighbor? Hi. Man. Hi, neighbor. So, this is going to be a great show. I'm not even going to do any formalities. We have got a lot of material now. Uh, we're going to be talking about origin stories today. If you're not familiar with this, this is something that PopX did when Austin first joined the team as PopX cast. We would break down as these series were coming out on back then Netflix and stuff like that. We would unpack these characters, these 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 people in the Marvel world, and give you a little bit of a heads up a week or two before the character dropped, either in the cinema yeah. or on the series of the streaming platform that you were watching it on. We're bringing it back. Origin Stories Returns, episode yes. 140 tonight. Moon Knight is coming up tonight. If you've never seen an origin story on Pop X, go back to some of our 60s and 50s, right around 40s, 50s, and 60s episode Those numbers, episodes. and you'll see you'll see kind of what we did back in the day. This is going to fall under origin stories. Man, we did so many good ones. We did. Wonder Woman. We did Wonder Woman. The yeah. Celestials. Celestials, long before the Eternals oh my came gosh. out. Yeah, it was great. So uh, we even did all the many shades of the Incredible Hulk and 
explained why Hulk yeah, has all the. Remember so that? I remember that too. That and we did the one. the contrast between the thing and man thing. We as did. Well. We oh, did. Yeah. Swamp Thing and Man Thing. Oh, yeah. Actually. The Swamp Thing and Man Thing. Yeah. Yes. So good. But um, Austin Burke, go ahead, man. Get this thing kicked off. Let's start episode 140. Dive in. Dive in. I think one of the good things about the origins, too, is they age very well, right? A lot of this stuff is topical that we talk about. Yes. But right. You can come back to this Moon Knight episode four years from now. And it'll. And be just as impacted. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah that's, exactly. That's one of the great things. But uh, welcome to Pop X, where science fiction meets pop culture. I'm Austin Burke, the Appalachian geek at heart. We'd like to welcome everyone joining us live in the popx.live chat room. Hang out with us. Join the conversation at popxcast.com. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, for the first 10 to 15 minutes, we run down the headlines since our last show, and then we deep dive into all things nostalgic on the retro rewind. Then at the halfway point, we hit on the show's topic. And today... And probably the next time you see us, too, but in television version, we're talking Moon Knight, and I can't wait. <laughs> Lindsay Badger, you are chuckling over there. What is oh. going on? Joe? Yes, ma'am? Are you Austin's dad? Dad? <laughs> I don't know. I don't... Someone in the chat wants to know if you're Austin's dad. Dad? <laughs> I'm sorry. That yeah. just is killed Joseph me. your dad, Austin? Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. well, yes, Sometimes yes, I am. <laughs> I am your father, <laughs> and you came for my loins. I'm sorry, but that just <laughs> that tickled me awkward. in just the right way. No, we're cousins. Um, we're, we're, we're first cousins. <laughs> we're um, our daddies are brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. See, there you go. So that's, that's the how that works. But, uh, you know, um, I would like to say that I had a small little snippet of helping Austin explore the geek side of him as a kid. Small. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I'm being large. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway, I have got to continue on with this show. Oh my God, you guys have Sorry. just derailed me. What's up, Shanae? How you doing <laughs> in the chat? Good to have you, Shanae. Welcome Thanks, in. Shanae. Uh, it's so good to see you, Shanae. Um, so moving on daddy? here, uh, Daddy, yeah. <laughs> you my daddy. <laughs> Oh, I am daddy. Joseph Burke, Central Florida's seasoned comic book nerd and retro <laughs> enthusiast and founder of Pop X Cast. Now, um, I want to say that we have a really cool group of creatives called the Creative Multiverse. You see the, the logo over on the right-hand side with the little sun in the Creative Multiverse. You see that QR code down below? If you scan that QR code, you can come and join our Discord channel. A lot of times throughout the week, a lot of my artists like myself and Lindsay and other great people from the Creative Multiverse are live streaming. We're in there on the Discord channel, either in audio or video. You can come hang with us, talk with us in real time. Uh, we usually will stream on Twitch, but we hang in Discord, and then we talk while we're streaming. So it's kind of cool. Come join us on the Creative Multiverse. It is a hodgepodge. You don't have to be an artist to join. You can just enjoy everybody else's artwork, which is kind of cool. It's true. So come join us. That's all right. And the Creative Multiverse. In the Creative <laughs> Multiverse. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Lindsay Badger, your favorite geeky Oki, also the wrangler of the Burks on this show, but I don't do a good job of it, and I am not related to either one of them. <laughs> Mom? <laughs> no. <laughs> Aww. Okay, maybe unofficial sister. <laughs> yeah, we'll take I'll accept that. It. <laughs> All right, so if you guys missed our last episode, which was number 139, we did break down the great movie that just released called The Batman. I don't mm. know if you've heard of it. Small but movie. We talked about it. Small movie. Broke it down. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. Also, on our retro rewind for that episode, we discussed Flight of the Navigator, which was quite a nice little treat. It was. Um, make sure you go over to our official website, popxcast.com, to go check out the replay of that and all the other good shows that are in the archive. <laughs> Of it's geeky good stuff. goodness. That's good exactly right. Geeky goodness. That's right. Geeky goodness. John, I will be your daddy. <laughs> I, I will be your daddy, John Poffenbarger. I want you to yes. know that. Oh, my God. You know All what? Right, friends. It, the funny thing, our audio people are just going to be li watching, listening to this on the on the replay, not oh seeing the video. Gosh. They're going to be like, what are they talking about? I what, don't know what's happening. What is going on? Listen, we audio love you, pod podcast friends. <laughs> audio podcast friends, you have got to come over, watch the live stream on YouTube of episode 140, and then somehow in your collective conscience, everything may click together. <laughs> um, but uh, who is your favorite actor playing a superhero? Lindsay Badger. The oh, oh look at you. You're getting some cues up in here, girl. Oh. Okay. Go ahead and answer it and think about it for a minute. 
can I marinate that? You can. Yeah. Just yeah. Marinate. Okay, let me finish Put this. Put some though. casing while, master paste on. While I'm thinking about it, I need the chat to do me a favor and go hit that thumbs up button right now. Please. And while you're right Please. there next to that button, there's a share button as well. I want you to click that. And if you haven't hit the bell or the subscribe or any of the other buttons that there's lots of buttons, click all of them. Just Ding. click them all. Ding. That would be super great. Podcast friends, I'm going to talk to you for a second. If you haven't yet given us a review, if you wouldn't want to click all five of those stars for us, maybe say something nice about the show. That would be super awesome, too. We love you a long time for it. All right. So it's, it's true. We love you a long time. You do. <laughs> I'm going to pull you guys. I, I love the good looking ones. OK, and I know they cast the good looking. She's ones going for with Hemsworth. Reason. She's going with Chris Hemsworth. I'm or Momoa. Pull Momoa. Stephen Amell. Oh. Green Arrow. I just love him as a person. I followed him on, on social media, and he's just an all around good person. Okay. <laughs> and he's he, beautiful. He is a good dude. Yeah. So just I would is say that he's probably definitely top five. I don't know if he's number one, but he's definitely in a good collect good all collection right. of beautiful humans. I, I feel what you're throwing out. That's there good pool. I feel it. Yeah. That's like good pool. That's yeah. good. Well, all right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and get into some news. We only got four segments for you this week on PopX News, but don't go anywhere. PopX Headlines is coming your way. Extra, extra. Read all about it. This is PopX News coming to you live right here on PopXCast.com. Austin, you got to do it, bro. Uh, I'm we were sorry. having such a good time. I know. I, I watched, I was in um, the ballroom getting ready to go into the Critics' Choice Awards and watched a lot of these celebrities react to this news oh, when no. it came on our phones. And it was a very quiet 20 minutes when we all got those notifications. Mm. So it was, it was interesting to see how his actual peers responded to his death. It was very interesting. But starting out on a somber note, uh, it's best, uh, best known to us Superhero fans as General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross in Marvel's The Incredible Hulk, Captain America's Civil War, uh, Avengers Infinity War slash Endgame, Black Widow. William Hurt has died just shy of his seven, uh, 72nd birthday. He also received an Oscar nomination for his role in the graphic novel adaptation The History of Violence. Mm-hmm. One of four nominations in his career. He won Best Actor for 1985's Kiss of the Spider Woman, which despite the title is not a comics related film. The actor revealed in 2018 that he had terminal prostate cancer and was taking an experimental treatment to minimize the side mm. effects. This news was devastating, mm. not yeah. only for all of the reasons that I'm sure you all will mention, but as comic fans, we were looking forward to way more of him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Red Hulk because we kind of knew that was coming. Yeah, um, you're losing. I think it was primed and ready for that to happen. Yeah. They I were setting it he, up, so I believe you're, he filmed some scenes in, in in She Hulk, right? Didn't he film some stuff yes. in that as yes. well? Yeah. He's in now. Now that this happened, though, they may cut out that storyline entirely. I would like if they left it in, but we'll have to see. Man, I've, I've uh, seen them keep parts of it, but just keep it shorter than what they originally. Sure. You, you know, I had a I had a thought when this happened, and I was. William Hurt is a is phenomenal actor. I, I know him from 80s movies, not specifically as Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, okay? And okay. I was thinking, I had, a, I had a thought. I was like, what if they go back to the original Hulk and bring in that General Ross, which was... Oh, that'd be fun. Do you remember who that was? Who the actor was? Yeah. No. The dude with the big mustache, you don't remember? He, he talks kind of like... Yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember his dude, name. Dude, it's like right there. Maybe the chat can help me out. Crap. But uh, anyway. he looks the part to a T. Yeah. <laughs> He's perfect. But what if with the multiverse... Ooh. Hey, pull it in. Make it happen. Ooh. Bring in another General Ross from that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mm -hmm. want to discredit anything that William Hurt's done. He is yeah. just... He is literally... His Civil War, all the way back to the Incredible Hulk, Humble Beginnings, 2008. I mean, uh, geez, Louise, I can't, uh, yeah, sad, sad news. Yes, very sad. And it's, 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 it's fleeting me, the name of the actor. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do a no-no when I'm going to have to Google this. Hulk, oh, no. Jenner, I know. I, I'm going to have to do it right here in real time because I, I, I want to make sure that the, the information that I'm conveying is, is accurate. Um, 
That is none other than... Uh, it even shows his picture, but it doesn't show the name of the actor. <laughs> Are you serious? Hold on a minute. I got to do this. Let me just do this and we'll move on. Uh, Sam Elliott. Oh, yeah. It was Sam Elliott. Oh, Sam, yeah. Sam I Elliott. Think, yeah. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> wow. Oh, my God. He was unreal as the character. Now, granted, I think they were both incredible. I completely forgot that was Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. Um, There's two who, General Rosses. If you, if, wow. If, if Ang Lee's version is considered canon in the multiverse... That's crazy. And Sam Elliott is is getting, you know, there was a little dead period, right? But he's coming back in a lot of these Yellowstone type westerns on on Paramount Plus. Oh, he's so such I, a great I, actor. He's massive right now, man. But, he's massive. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I'm no discredit to William Hurt. I was just thinking outside sure. the box in the multiverse. What can happen? That'd be but great. anyway, Lindsay Badger. Yes. Tell us about what's coming this okay. year. Okay. Uh, well, if we we take a moment and reflect back on 1982. Good year. The original Star Wars trilogy had yet mm. to conclude, and Khan's wrath was making William Shatner scream on the screen. <sighs> and the Masters of the Universe debuted in Toy Stories. At this time, there was no f- filmation cartoon that existed to popula- popularize the catchphrases like, I have the power. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It didn't exist yet. So it was just the toy line that was combining all the sci-fi and the barbarian fantasy and making boys go wild and crazy over this stuff. I did. Yeah. So four decades later, there is all of these pop culture phenomenon that re-brings all of this back to life. And they come up with new series of these cartoons. Well, boys and girls, they're going to come out with a new toy line. To celebrate Mattel's oh. 40th anniversary He-Man figure, cool. Later yeah. this year, highly articulated. I got a. There's a picture yes. of it on the screen right now. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I believe he's 10 inches tall, and they're going to do some backwash paint on the muscles to make the muscles de- be more defined. Is not just a plastic mold, but they're putting paint to show the definition of the muscle tone and the sculpt of the actual figure itself. That's nice. Cool. Um, yeah. And it's going to be better a, than the originals. Right now, I don't know where this is going. It's it's going to be sold by Mattel. I don't know. I know Mattel has a contract with Walmart distri- distribution. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know exactly where you're going to be able to find this just yet. This was just announced literally three days ago. Oh, but man. if you are a fan of wow. He Man, this is going to be a big figure. It's going to be in the it's toy book big. this this for um, the Christmas. This yeah, season. you yes. might, might want to get your wish book out. Get it out. Get that you know sharpie. Start circling. Get your sharpie. And circle, circle what you want. <laughs> and Santa Claus will bring it to you. All right. Yeah. But uh, you know it's it's going to be interesting. I I definitely want to try to track this down because I am a. I I'm know a, Joe's going to try to get the <clears throat> castle so that he can have a battle. I don't with have any weird. No, I have the original castle. Yeah. Oh, I have the original snake. You've Gotta seen have it too. Castle Grayskull. I have yeah. Snake Mountain and Castle Grayskull. I have nowhere to display them though, but I'm just you know. I know exactly where it is in your closet too. You do, That's really yeah. weird because I've never been to your house. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? That's so strange. Uh-huh. All right, we're going to move on here. <laughs> All right, so good God. it's been a week for Marvel TV shows that's formerly called Netflix Home. But Ooh. on Wednesday, right. guess what? Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Defenders, and Punisher joined Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as the latest additions to Disney+. Plus. Now, they that did. puts the vast majority of Marvel's television series under the rooftop for the first time under yes. the Disney umbrella. Now, however, it may also... Be, have been a prelude to a continuation of the Daredevil series as we know. Now, the new issue of Production Weekly lists a Daredevil reboot among Marvel Studios' upcoming projects. Now, rumor outlets have essentially said the, the same thing since the show was canceled in 2018. This is different because Production Weekly is a Hollywood trade magazine and not a press outlet that speculates on rumor mills. And while the project is questioned, is still unannounced, we don't know what it's going to be or what it's going to entail, Mm -hmm. its placement here suggests that Marvel already has a time frame in mind for the return of Matt Murdock and Charlie Cox. (sighs) Well, I have my parental controls updated on my Disney Plus. (laughs) I don't have parental controls. Parental controls on anything. <laughs> I'm just gonna let let it. Um, it makes sense. I mean, we just saw the <clears throat> he's showed up in Spider Man, so it just makes sense that they're gonna be bringing that back to life and making a thing to to really like rev it up mm-hmm. for the next movie. That's I'm excited. Coming. The reason I'm excited about this, I was worried about these shows coming to Disney in transition 
mm-hmm. of being highly edited. Yeah, oh, I was worried about yeah. this. Yeah. Me too. If you've not noticed this, I, I believe uh, The Verge and ComicBook.com did a side-by-side comparison of fight scenes. The most gruesome, R-rated, bloodiest gore scenes of this series and Punisher, yeah. nothing was edited. Yay! It's awesome. It's nothing awesome. was edited. Yeah. What does that say for the new series in the reboot revival that's coming with Daredevil? They have a really great template to work with, and it's they're probably happening. going to keep it rated R. So, fingers crossed. Let's yeah, go. They, they, that, that notification came through, and they were like, make sure you're okay with <laughs> MA stuff. And I was like, bring on the MA, DC. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Junior sales in chat. He-Man versus Daredevil. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Man, that would, I don't be, know if, that would be crazy. I don't know if they've reported this yet. I don't know. Even if they haven't, it's not breaking news. This is just someone I know, so take it worth a grain of salt. But I hear the uh, cast, the whole cast, is returning from the show. Yes. Everybody. Foggy, <sighs> Air, all of them. They're all coming back. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Such a good series. That uh, that makes me happy. That's just what I've heard. That's so. good. Just, you know, grain well, of salt. Well, Austin Burke, you have the last news segment of this show, so go for it. Oh, maybe the best news of the Maybe, night. maybe. Um, this might be the highlight, yeah. <laughs> this might be it. Um. Star Wars The Mandalorian has become a key part of the sci-fi landscape over the past few years. And now it looks like Disney Plus will be adding a new icon from the genre to its cast. On Friday, The Hollywood Reporter revealed that Back to the Future star and, <laughs> st- oh my God, and Star Trek 3, the search for Spock's Christopher Lloyd will be joining Season three of The Mandalorian, what? which is currently filming in Southern California. What is While the happening? character Lloyd is playing is currently on wraps, the report describes it as a guest star role. It's unclear at this point how many episodes Lloyd could ultimately end up appearing in after several of The Mandalorian's <laughs> guest starring characters have returned for later episodes. Guys, this casting is bomb. <laughs> Dude, let's so good. go. <laughs> Dude, this Star Wars series that John Favreau was a part of over there at Disney and, and Lucasfilm, crazy. he's pulled uh, in so many cameos. It's I such mean, a good project. Oh, yes. It is Just so all good. all around. Yeah. I, I, and I think John Favreau, in a way, is paying homage to pop culture as a whole. Sure. I mean, yeah. everything that inspired him growing up as a kid. I mean, Doc Brown and the DeLorean. Yeah. What kid, what 10 year old kid was not blown away by that in 1985? Yeah. I mean, I know I was. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, hey, if Christopher Lloyd, he's still kicking butt. Man, he was in Nobody. I mean, the dude yeah. was wielding a shotgun in Nobody. Come on. He was, he was unreal. Like, I thought, you know, okay, he's getting older. He's going to settle down. No, no, no. no I see him so in Nobody. Good. I'm like, the guy still has it physically. Dude, he's, hit it. <laughs> he's hitting his prime. <laughs> <laughs> He's just now entering his prime. It's I amazing. need to go back and watch Nobody again because I forgot how Great. good that oh, was. Yeah. So One good. of my favorites of that year. Yeah. My gosh, I just loved that movie so much. Yeah, but I'm excited. Are you excited for Christopher Lloyd and Mandalorian season three? I mean, that's pretty. If you're excited, let us know in the chat. Leave a comment in the chat. And uh, if you're watching this on replay, please do so. Type us an email. Send us something on yes. Twitter. Let us know because this is exciting that Doc Brown joins. The Star Wars, oh, canon, and Crazy. becomes solidified. Now, he's in Star Trek. Yeah. He, he was, I mean, dude, he's in everything. In everything. Doc, Christopher Lloyd's amazing. He played Rick in the Rick and Morty commercial. He did. Like, come on, man. The live action. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. <laughs> so good. Oh, the Mandalorian. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my God, dude! That is the best one of God. the night, right there. That was awesome. He was even he was in that promo for the Adams product, Adam Project too. Oh yeah, he was, wasn't he? The yeah. Mandalorian. <laughs> Isn't that because that's it was a... about time travel, and they were like, "Who oh, best dude. to have this so promote good. this other than this guy?" Mandalorian. <laughs> that's so that's John Poffenbarger single-handedly brilliant. wrecking our show right now. John, John, <laughs> John. It. Oh man, man were you guys ready for some awesome. retro rewind? Oh, yeah. Let's All right, guys. We were going to rewind and rewind. Let's do it. All right. So don't go anywhere. We got some retro rewind coming your way. Got a great one here for you this week. I hope you guys dig this. This is going to be some stand by me. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Retro rewind. Retro rewind. Rewind. 
Retro Rewind, and we are talking about one of the greatest movies to come out of 1986, and a movie that spoke to me on many levels as a kid growing up, and that is Stand By Me. So if you don't know, Stephen King wrote a series of short novels, not full, complete works of novels, but he wrote these short stories, and one of those short stories was a was a an adaptation called The Body, and it basically centered around this group of kids finding this body on the railroad tracks. Essentially, is, is, is the premise of the movie. Mm-hmm. And them coming to terms with their own life after seeing their first ever dead body in, 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 out in the wild, you know. And, but then we have this adaptation, which just sprinkle. It goes to show you that Stephen King can, doesn't necessarily have to write a horror film to have a good... Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. He, he doesn't need to write horror all the time. And um, I remember watching this with um, Uncle Matt. Uh, and and your mm. and your and your father Tim, uh, Austin. I remember watching this. They had rented the movie, and um, we were in the um, we were in not the house on Long Fork, the one before that up on oh, the mountain, okay. up on the mountain in, in Virginia, oh, yeah. and the one that had the fireplace. I don't know if you remember that house, barely. No. But yeah, but I remember we were all in the room watching this together mm-hmm. for the first time, and yep. it was like 1987. I believe it was just, I was look, I mean, I, I think about it and I look back and, and, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about the film, but that memory of being there with my uncles as an eight year old kid watching this for the first time, it was pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. It's a great moment for me. Um, so I want to get, uh, I want to go, let's start with, usually I start with Lindsay. I want to start with Austin, then Lindsay this time. We'll see what, uh, switch it up. Austin, what did you think about stand by me? Yeah, this is this is one of the defining 80s movies for me. Um, it, it, it's one that, you know, it hit me as a kid because obviously you're going to relate because it's about a bunch of kids, right? But it hit me as a kid because I, I could see pieces of myself in each of the main characters, mm. um, whether that be kind of what they're dealing with, how they're responding to each other, what they're learning, the fear that comes through them um, after that event at the beginning. There's just, there's a lot about this group, the way that they come together uh, that you can relate to even, and I know it's an eighties movie, but you know, even myself growing up in, in the early two thousands, really, I mean, kind of like, but early, early two thousands, there's so much that you go through as a kid that's just put on full display. So, you know, even though, you know, King is known for his horror. He's known for scares. This is one of the best coming of age stories mm. ever. Like, not just ever. Oh, in the eighties, no, ever. It's that good and it's that well written. And I, I think just the choices all throughout them. That's what I got from rewatching this uh, yesterday evening. I was watching and just almost analyzing it in a way that I was never able to as a kid. I'm like. And, and a lot of it is Rob Reiner, because I think Rob Reiner is a Amazing. phenomenal, a, a phen- especially when you look at that time, right? Maybe not as great now, but back in the day, man, just banger after banger after banger. He had his but, finger on it, for sure, the pulse. Yes, yeah. like, but but his directing style, his the cinematography, Joe, that shot that you posted on your Instagram story is one of the most, like... Iconic. Iconic and beautiful shots of the whole movie. Yeah. Um, but then the cast, man, holy cow. You don't... Think about the cast. Like, the main one here for me is River Phoenix. Like, River knowing, Phoenix. knowing that we never got to see him fully develop into that and then kind of seeing shades of that in Joaquin nowadays, it's so, like, sad. But when you go back and watch something like this, you're like, man, he was good. Not just – he yeah. was a top-tier talent at that age. But you combine all of those things into a Stephen King film that goes beyond being – I mean – really touching a horror movie, a little bit of that, uh, but turns into something else entirely, man. I, I love this film. Yeah. I watched it as a kid, loved it. I watched it as an adult, and I'm able to analyze it and just see so many techniques in it, man. I think this movie's freaking phenomenal. Yeah, and, you know, we we're, we want to talk about Richard Dreyfuss as well, his role in this movie as yes. the father oh and God. the author, who is essentially narrating and telling the story and writing it on his computer while the story is unfolding. Love the narration. And uh, Love you know, we got a screenshot of Dreyfus right there in front of his computer uh, nice. and stand by me talking. And um, it, it, for me, I want to go to Lindsay right after this. Uh, for me, it was that somber cello of stand by me, the symphonic <laughs> version playing in the background 
that gave me chills, you know? Da, 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 yeah. Beautiful. Da, da, da. It was just, I, I just, something about that song, Stand By Me, I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's, it, it's echoes in the annals of time yeah. how amazing, Lean On Me and Stand By Me <laughs> are by far two of my favorite songs of all time. And um, but Lindsay, I want to I want to get the female perspective. I want to shut up. All right. Well, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, fuck. Uh, yeah. This I don't recall watching this. I don't know how I missed really? it. But here's the thing: whenever I was watching it, I had a lot of callbacks to other movies in this era. I I mean, other than obviously, you had a star-studded lineup of actors that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, they're all so young that you almost didn't even recognize something like Will Wheaton. Yeah. Oh, my God. Will I was Wheaton. like, is, are we sure this is the same kicks? I mean, he doesn't even look like the next generation Will Wheaton. He's yeah. a baby. Yeah. So, I mean, just just placing them in the the movies of their futures is just you can see that that's where their power comes from. It's such a young age. They're so good at what they do so it doesn't surprise me at all that they continue to have such wonderful careers but the tone of the story the tone of the movie that yeah. 1950s mm -hmm. run around and your parents don't care where the heck you are until the sun goes down and probably even after that they don't care either as long as you show up for dinner yeah, yeah. you know that was basically the gist of how these kids lived which was great because you know you have the tree houses and the, going to the candy store and buying mm -hmm. all the junk and you know uh, the whole thing gave me sandlot vibes oh, it gave yes. me goonies vibes yes. it gave me a little bit of forrest gump vibes that That's whole good. feel of just good american story being told and of course, I didn't even know it was Stephen King until I saw the credits at the end. Adapted Crazy. from blah, 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 Stephen King. Because, you know, yep. I don't pay attention, clearly. <laughs> so <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> so I was just like, huh, that's a Stephen King show, huh? It didn't, it wasn't super scary, but I mean, obviously, yeah, there was like one body that was like kind of covered with some trees. But other mm -hmm. than that, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, we, we even had a little bit of grease vibes in there with the car mm -hmm. playing chicken with the truck on the sure. road. Yep. You know? Yeah. And the, you know, the little greaser gang being, you know, causing <laughs> trouble around town. Knocking and stuff. mailboxes down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I just love that whole feel. And it really makes it, you go back to a time that does no, doesn't exist pure. anymore. It was pure. It's and so innocent. pure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Lindsay, I, that just delights my heart to hear that you've got the gist of the film, the heart yeah. of this film. Um, I, you know, there's this one scene. i got to share this picture. Um, there's this, I'm going to show you guys a picture right now on screen. This picture where River Phoenix is hugging Will Wheaton. Oh. And his character breaks down because he realizes he wants his brother back. That broke my Dude, heart. Dude, let me tell yeah. you something. Oh my God, my dad hates me. I watched me. this Friday night. Oh my God. I watched this Friday. And that, Austin, that's when you retreated my story. And I watched this. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there literally in the house all by myself. Alex was, Alex was still at work. And I was sitting there bawling like a baby. It just touched me so much. And the, the, the emotion that these kids at this age, especially River Phoenix, the maturity... Yes. Mm -hmm. Of such, what a beautiful soul River Phoenix was, and it sucks yeah. what happened to him. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's it's a tragedy because I mean, River could have been one of those method actors like his brother. Oh yes, big time. Yeah. But it's really sad, and it was an emotional. It was emotional for me. Uh, you know, every time that scene comes up, yeah, that moment, uh, it was just it, it, it grabs, it pulls my heartstrings. So with all that said, guys, you know, I, I want to make sure that we uh, allow, for me, uh, the score was obviously beautifully accompanied. Um, practical effects, there really wasn't, don't need it. Not for a story like this. It didn't Grounded. need, it didn't need yeah. anything too, too crazy. No. Um, the, uh, the, the lard ass scene was amazing. I love it. You know, oh. you're stepping into the mind of, of oh, it's Will. classic. It was great. You know, he was becoming a writer, and he's trying to make this story up as he goes yeah. around the campfire. And so good, so classic. And it was just a blueberry puke massacre. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so bad. Yeah. But we got to we got to score this thing, and um, Austin, Lindsay, and myself will go in that order. What do you rate? Stand by me. Gosh, guys, I. 
I might be a little outlandish with this one, but I like this more than Goonies. I, I this is my wow. coming of age story. I'm I'm going a uh, we're going to go 95 with Holy my score. I, 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 think, I think this is one of the best Ooh. 80s movies of all time. I really do. Wow, that's very high praise. I really yeah. don't disagree with you, bro. Yeah. yeah. This might be one of the best child group adventure movies yeah. that we reviewed on Pop X. Aside and from it the holds up. it holds yeah. up so freaking well, man. Like you're watching this in 2022 going... Dude, it, it looks beautiful. You know, what's, yeah. you know what's so crazy about that is that, really, if you think about their adventure, mm-hmm. there's a whole lot of railroad track. Yeah. A yeah. whole lot of railroad track. So, I mean, so simple. You, have, you have the little river with the leeches. You have a run with a train that gets kind of scary on a bridge. But other than that, there's a whole lot of railroad track. Yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, it's amazing how high that storytelling power is. Yeah. Mm, yes. You know, it's all about the actors. and, and, and the, It's the cutscenes, though, too. Like, yeah. you know, we have John oh. Cusack as Will Wheaton's brother in this. Yes. That is great. And, it, it, I, you know, a lot of people are like, I forgot Cusack was even in this film. <laughs> and, yeah. But... But he's struggling because it's just four months after he died. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it four months after he died in this movie? I think I, something. I like think that. so. Yeah. And it's just it, was, it wasn't fresh. Long. It's fresh, you know. Very. Got killed by a jeep in an accident. That just is yeah. a fluke. Anyway, Random Austin, ninety five percent. Lindsay Badger. I'm gonna go with an eight point two. It's pretty oh, good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Let's go. I'm gonna go with a probably an eight point nine for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is up there with one of those films that I highly regard. Good stuff. I I try to watch it at least once a year. Uh, I, I you know I, I've already logged it three times on my uh, letterboxed. Yeah, it's just you know that's the way it is. That's that's, that's how. Awesome. It, what do you guys think of Stand by Me, nineteen eighty six? It's uh, Stephen King's adaptation of it, and uh, you know Rob Reiner's uh, screenplay and adaptation of the novel, obviously with the score and just the child actors that they chose. Not to mention we have Kiefer Sutherland in here, which is amazing. Yeah, Um, Yeah, crazy. But uh, what do you guys rate it? Leave it in the chat right now. If you're watching on the live stream, let us know what your score is. You can do 8 point whatever. You can do 88%. It doesn't matter. You can Um, do 2.4% if you really didn't like it. uh, That's not good. That would hurt. Yeah, we're going to just, we'll block you right now if you do that. No, we won't. (laughs) I'm just joking. (laughs) No, I'm just teasing. But uh, leave it in the comments. If you're watch- listening on the audio podcast, be sure to let us know. Drop us a tweet on Twitter or on Instagram. Let us Please. know what you thought about Stand By Me on the Retro Rewind on episode 140, yeah. okay? But with all that said, are you guys ready for some origin stories? Let's Ooh, unpack it. Yes. Okay. Well, man, this is going to be great because I honestly, I have no intro at all for... for <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I, have no, um, I have no audio soundbite for an origin story. <laughs> All right, here we go. Or, or, origin story, 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 <laughs> starting now, Moon Knight. There, how you, how's that? There is it that, is. is that good? I love that. that okay, was great. yeah. And clip and keep. <laughs> and keep. All right, so um, if you're not familiar with how we do origin stories, there's a lot of dialogue involved. So hopefully you guys can hang with us for the duration of the next 20 heavy, minutes. But it's good. It is script heavy, but they're going to notice some names. In this script, as we're as we're each of us are doing and spending time on a certain section of Moon Knight's origin story, be be sure to listen for key names that you're going to listen for and see in the series. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically, yeah. you're going to hear a lot about the Bushman. You're going to hear a lot about Conchu. Yes. You're going to hear a lot of these, and we're going to help you kind of give you a little bit of the backstory. So when you go mm-hmm. and see this series launch, uh, literally in 10 days from today's date, you're going to be like, Oh, I remember what they said about on pop X. I know what so the Bushman get out, is. Get out your textbooks and turn to page 42 yep. and uh-huh. get your notebook and pencil sharpened. We are about to go to school. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to do this. And the beautiful thing is this is going to be live stream. So you can always come back. And I will tell you this, this much guys, I do own the Marvel latest edition of the Marvel encyclopedia. It's a book about that thick uh you can find it on amazon it's about 125 dollars if you find the latest version of it um but i did pull a lot of this information directly from the marvel universe encyclopedia i want everything to be as accurate and as current as possible so that's where a lot of this information came from Uh, some of the side stories and stuff came from the marvel fan wiki 
I want you guys, I want to give credit to those guys as well, specifically on some of the things in the latter part of uh, today's uh, show. The abilities and powers and then trivia is where that part came from as well. But we're going to break it down into sections. We're going to have Moon Knight origin story. We're going to have early life. All right, so you're going to, have to learn his mercenary life because he was in the military. Becoming Moon Knight is going to be section four. And then section five, personality, section six, abilities and power. So you're yeah. going to have all of this tonight before we end the stream. Without further ado, I'm going to get you started. You guys ready for this? Some Moon Knight origin stories mm. dropping to you now. Mark Spector, that's the name, that's him. Better known as the Vigilante Moon Knight, was once a mercenary left for dead in the desert, where he was revived by the moon god Kanshu. Now, appointed as Kanshu's fist and high priest, Moon Knight enacts justice to protect those who travel at night. Now, Mark also has disassociative identity disorder, some of his alters being millionaire Steve Grant, alter ego, it's still the same dude, and cab driver Jake Lockley. Hmm. Interesting. So we, we are dealing, dealing with a guy here who has many lives. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of his career, Mark fought crime on the streets with the help of a network of informants, including his best friend, uh, Frenchie, who is uh, Frenchie Duchamp, and a homeless, uh, betrayed Crawley, uh, I believe as uh, a diner owner, and Jenna mm -hmm. Landers. So those are three names that you now definitely want to remember for sure. Uh, since the early days, Mark has mostly worked alone, uh, but he's also been a member of a few superhero teams, including West Coast Avengers, the Secret Avengers, and the Heroes for Hire. If you nice. don't remember that, Heroes for Hire was also Luke Cage, Iron yeah. Fist, and Daredevil. So we're talking <laughs> about some Hell's Kitchen love in here. Recently, Mark discovered that he had daughter, a daughter named uh, Deatrice uh, with his longtime lover, Marlene Ar uh, Alron. Uh, but when Khonshu sensed Mephisto's plans for world domination, Mephisto. Mark left her to fight his gods side by side to prevent that from coming true. So he's literally fighting for the gods here. He's fighting on behalf of the gods. When Khonshu uh, succumbed to... When Khonshu... I'll get it out. When Khonshu succumbed to madness, however, Mark had to turn against him and help the Avengers defeat him, the own god that's inhabiting him. Following Khonshu's imprisonment, Spectre established the Midnight Mission. The Midnight Mission is a group of elite people that are kind of like the defenders but under the moonlight wing to offer his help to any night dweller, that's a cool word, who might need his assistance. Now, Lindsay Badger is going to give us some early life. That's right. Chat's already life. like, Mephisto! <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Mephisto, Mephisto has returned. <laughs> yes, he's a, it's, it's all a Mephisto. Thing. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right, so we're going to break down the early life. Uh, Mark Spector was born in Chicago, Illinois, and he was the son of a rabbi who, as a child, had managed to escape from the Nazi persecution after Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, Mark grew up on the poor side of the city where his father, El Elias, mm -hmm. was the target of discrimination. Mark couldn't understand why his father wouldn't ever fight back against the persecution. Um, and he grew up with his younger brother, Randall, and his father would walk his kids to school every day. But him being a rabbi caused Randall to be bullied. But Mark was there to defend him. His father was very disappointed with the boys' violent nature and their obsession with war, and he believed that he should concentrate on their education. But his wife dismissed this as just boys being boys. Mm. <laughs> During the last years of their childhood, Mark discovered by chance that a close friend of his family, Rabbi Yitz, per Yitz Perlman, was in reality, a Nazi deserter and secretly a serial killer of Jews named Ernst. Mark's fighting instinct kicked off for the first time when he fended off against Perlman to escape his grasp. Perlman later disappeared without a trace. This traumatic event also caused Mark to develop a dissociative identity disorder. The first alters developed by 
Mark were Stephen Grant and Jake Lockley. Shortly after, Elias decided to intern Mark at the Putman Psychiatric Hospital. Well, that's fun. That's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Mark was approached for the first time by an Egyptian deity, Khonshu, mm. uh, claiming to be Mark's true progenitor. After his father's death, Mark was allowed to leave the hospital temporarily to attend the funeral and a late luncheon. But after hearing Khonshu's voice, he ran away. After his death, Mark resented his father, mm. believing that Elias was embarrassed by him. Interesting. So his daddy issues. So his daddy, so, you know, his daddy was a very religious man. Yes. And so he was raised, uh, he's raised a Jew. Um, and so uh, he, he just got a lot of, he's pulled in a lot of directions. And at, at a very early age, as Lindsay was saying, war and fighting, even with very his siblings and family, was this always violent natured, violent natured person. And we all know that is definitely the construction and construct of a very great superhero story. So um, <laughs> Austin Burke gets the joy of giving us a little bit about his mercenary life here. Well, it's already crazy, too, because, Lindsay, what you said about Khonshu, it, it almost it reminds me of the scene we saw in the first trailer where mm -hmm. it looks like Khonshu is approaching him for the first time. That may be pulling straight from the comic books. So well, I believe it is. Read. I yeah. believe it is. Yeah. yeah. That's why we're doing this, because these names you're hearing, Jake I mean, imagine Lockley. imagine that. You having a kid. You being a kid and having some weird voice talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would scare the crap out of me. You, we very well could <laughs> see him as a kid being torn from his country. Oh, my gosh. Coming mm -hmm. to America and hearing this voice. Lindsay, I mean, you, you just described it perfectly. Yep. Man. So, all right. All right. So, mercenary life, another interesting aspect to his story. Mark enlisted in the Marines and served for three years. So, uh, we know there is a, a special set of skills in there somewhere. Mm. On his second tour in Iraq, his super, uh, superiors caught notice of Mark's bizarre behavior. After his past was dug up, Mark was dishonorably discharged. Mm. Okay. There's a notch in his past for later. Yeah. Uh, he later joined the CIA and worked with several people who would later interact with Moon Knight, including William Cross, Amos Lardner, and his brother, Randall Spector. Now, let's talk about the kids really quick. Randall, at one point, killed Spector's girlfriend, Lisa, with a hatchet oh my to keep her God. from exposing a gun-running scheme. <laughs> Spector retaliated with a grenade and assumed Randall was dead. So those boys getting into trouble again. Let me tell you. <laughs> Those boys will be boys. Do, boys before, will be before boys. Before you continue on to the sec next paragraph, uh, who do we know Ethan Hawke is playing? Do we know the character he's playing? We know he's a cult leader. That's that's all I know personally. He's a what cult if he's leader. playing Randall? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, anyway, go ahead and continue God. on. Wow, Joe, you're blowing my mind over here. You're all speculating right. the specter. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love right. this. Um once he left the CIA, Spectre enrolled in illegal fights where he befriended Frenchie Duchamp, uh, and both became soldiers for hire. Okay, you got a little superhero yep. team-up sort of prior duo. to being a yep. superhero. That's pretty cool. Uh, they took on several assignments, mainly in Africa and South America. Spectre later went to trial for assassinating the president uh, of Bosque Verde, a South American country. So, Dang. Uh, in the words of Loki, he has a little bit of red on his ledger going in. Yes, he does. <laughs> just a little bit. Um, just splattered everywhere. Just, just a lot. <laughs> After Spectre and Frenchie met Raoul Bushman in Egypt, they traveled to North Sudan near the Egyptian border for a raid on an archaeological site where Bushman killed the lead archaeologist, uh, Peter Alro, to find an Egyptian pharaoh's tomb. Oh, we're getting there closer. Here we go. We're getting closer. Um, Spectre. Punch Bushman to protect uh, our, to protect Alron's daughter, Marlene. Furious, Bushman mortally wounded him in the desert, killing everyone in the place except for Marlene, Frenchie, and a villager willing to tell him the secrets of the tomb. Spectre managed to reach the tomb before he collapsed, and Marlene and the crew laid him beneath uh, beneath an idol of here it comes again, <laughs> Conchu. Mm -hmm. His spirit had an encounter with Conchu who promised to save his life in exchange for his service. Mm. Okay? So that's when Spectre agreed, although 
He later considered this encounter a hallucination, so he didn't know whether it was real or not. He just knows that he agreed to somebody. May have been himself. Uh, restored to life, he punished Bushman's, Bushman's men while Bushman himself escaped. So there is your true origin. That's, of that's the meat and right potatoes there. right there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, uh, <laughs> if you guys are watching the stream right now, I dug up this really cool panel. Uh, it's on the stream. And oh, that looks cool. Moon Knight wow. is talking to Frank Castle. And I'm going to read this before I read my section. Hello, Mark. Are you still crazy? Moon Knight. A little bit. Are you still murdering people? A little bit. How's your imaginary god? He's good. How's your dead family? <laughs> oh, my God. That'll give you a little idea of what you're dealing with here. All right. So that's savage. Well, <laughs> savagery. It'll be crazy. Yeah. All right. So becoming Moon Knight. All right. So having finally found a purpose in life, Spectre applied himself fully. He moved to New York and with Frenchie and Marlene, now his lover Marlene, and developed the costume, the equipment, and persona of Moon Knight. With a fortune made from gambling in addition to supporting his new career of fighting crime, he began using his Stephen Grant persona as a financier and Jake Lockley as a cab driver whose purpose was to gather information at the street level. So he's... He's not crazy. He's crazy, but he's not crazy because he's got different people doing different things, and he's literally got his finger on the pulse of the entire city, from wealth and fame to a lowly cab driver, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, so anyway, moving along here. Uh, where am I at? Uh, all right, so uh, Stephen Grant persona and the financier Jake uh, Cab. Uh, his original persona with its multiple facets faded kind of into the background. We, Mark Spector kind of faded away. He lost touch with reality wow. in a sense. Still leading four separate lives, four separate lives, uh, put great mental stress on Spectre. Lockley developed a network of informants including the homeless uh, uh, Bertrand Crawley, diner owner uh, Jenna Landers, and her two sons, Ricky and Ray. Now, Spectre's first major job as Moon Knight came when the committee hired him to capture a werewolf named Jack Russell. He succeeded in a large part thanks to the silver crest that he was equipped with that's on his chest. There's a, there's a mm. crest emblem that's on his chest, and he can actually remove it. So if you see the promo images, Moon Knight is holding, and it's kind of a down angle. He's holding this half-mooned kind of, I, like a, it's like a, a boomerang type thing, if you, if you will. Uh, so uh, he succeeded in large part thanks to the silver crest that he had. And however, he learned that the committee planned to turn Russell's sister into another werewolf and use them both as weapons. Now, he did the honorable thing and switched sides. Spectre and Russell shut down the committee. Now, Spectre faced... Now, you can kind of see there's going to be some Blade vibes into this. Yes. Got to let you know that, right? Okay. So Maybe Blade and Moon Knight has had many run-ins. Just, just kind of setting. Spectre faced Conquer Lord on his own before briefly joining the Defenders to bat the Defenders. There you go, Heroes for Hire, and a life model decoy version of the Zodiac. All right. So the first skeleton from Spectre's closet to bedevil from whom Spectre rescued was the Thing. We're talking about the Thing okay. from Fantastic Four. Okay. Okay. We're talking about him. Uh, he met Spider-Man for the first time when they teamed up against the masked marauder, uh, who at the time called himself the Big M and employed the original Cyclone. Uh, Moon Knight had reached the big time and encountered supervillains with more frequency. Very early on, he had faced a serial killer dubbed the Hatchet Man, who claimed to be his brother Randall. That makes sense since he hatcheted Lisa. It makes a Lisa. lot of sense uh, since he cut his. Fr yeah, that's that's that's. Dark. Yeah, poor Lisa. <laughs> that's poor Lisa. That's dark. Lindsay that's Badger, what gosh. else you got for us here? Well, let's carry continue this on here. Uh, Spectre investigated the death of Amos Lardner when his body arrived in a crate on Spectre's doorstep. Wow. How convenient! That's I nice. bet she was two days shipping. That's lovely. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He learned that Amos' brother James had become a test subject in a CIA experiment, one that Spectre himself had participated in. And when Amos investigated, he was forced to undergo the same treatment and committed suicide as a result. Ew. Wow. Yes. That's dark. Spectre faced other menaces, some superpowered, some insane, some simply ambitious, but all 
dangerous. Mm -hmm. He confronted the slasher, a man slaying homeless people in an effort to find his father. Well, okay. All right. A man's, um, he tracked down Bushman and sent him to jail, but Bushman struck back by having Midnight Man, a more recent foe, destroy Spectre's idol of Khonshu. Oh. Rude. <laughs> right? <laughs> By this time, Spectre was convinced that Khonshu had given him his powers and was well, fo a w as well as a focus in life. His precarious self-control broke down until Marlene produced another idol, which she claimed was the original. Oh, tricky, <laughs> tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Moon Knight's major foe, Morpheus trigger word, uh, <laughs> turned out to be a patient of Dr. Peter Alru, what, how do we say Alrone? Alrone. Alrone. Yep. Marlene's brother. And the idol of Khonshu sustained Spectre again when he first encountered the Black Spectre, who tried to terrorize people in supporting his bid for mayor. Mm. Nobody, including Dr. Alrun, believed Spectre when he claimed that Knowles was the Black Spectre, but Khonshu gave him the strength to prevail. So, summary here, uh, you can kind of see that uh, there's some definite tie-ins. You, you, we're seeing a lot of stuff of Bushman. Yes. Bushman has already been cast as the series. The actor has already... Uh, you can go and... be and the big bad. If you Google Moon Knight uh, series uh, actor list, you will find and you will see the roles that they're playing. Although, now, Ethan Hawke's role has not been mentioned. I kind of mm -hmm. want to think that that might be Randall. He's going to be Hatchman. Maybe. Man. It would be cool if it was Randall. But well, I'm just it saying. would be. It would be yeah. cool. But I don't know where that's going. But uh, Randall is the hatchet man. So that's... that's. Now, Austin, you're going you're gonna to finish up Lindsay's part, and you're going to go in, into a little bit of personality as we're kind of bringing it home here. Yeah. On this. Yeah. Yeah. So we can hit on the origin just a bit more here. So uh, we'll start out with a battle with the fly. That left Spectre unable to walk, but he clicked, uh, quickly recovered. To stop an ancient Egyptian curse... Spectre briefly hosted the spirit of a priest of Khonshu. We got a lot of Khonshu within yep. this yes. origin story, uh, which helped to integrate his personalities. But later, Spectre suffered another serious mental breakdown and decided to abandon all of his alternate identities to settle down with Marlene. By reconciling with his father's legacy, though, he found a measure of peace and decided to retire from crime fighting. This, this the There's story. always a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, just think of where they can go with this if the show keeps going, man. Oh, my God. Um, so as part of his new life, Spectre gave up uh, his Grant identity and sold the idol at a gallery in Paris. He had a vision, however, telling him that the image is delivered up to evil. Mm. Call back to action Moon Knight. Of course, he returns. Uh, he learned that Marlene could no longer tolerate his schizophrenic behavior. So she left him. Oh, in the that sucks. In the Egyptian Valley of the Kings, Spectre met three ancient priests of Khonshu, who told him that Khonshu had been ch uh, had chosen him as an early champion and gave him new weapons. Only later did Spectre realize that Khonshu himself was influencing him subconsciously. So. That's a lot you're gonna to have to convey in this TV show. That's I'm a lot. I'm telling to you, unpack. it's it's mental. This there's gonna be a lot of mental illness in this show. Yeah. I'm interested to see how well they convey the many Keeping personas. That internal storyline is gonna yes. be very it's, tricky. It's gonna be very tricky, but I, yeah, I, I think Marvel and Kevin Feige can definitely do it. Awesome. A little bit of J James McAvoy is split kind yeah. of comes to mind too. Maybe yeah. something James yeah lines. split would be interesting. Um, so now we get into his personality, and this this is really, I think, the just the highlight of what we need to know about this entire series because it's all about his multiple personalities. Okay, Moon Knight can be best characterized by his relationship with Kanchu, of course, and whether that is derived from his own mental illness or from actual divine inspiration. So there's something that the audience is going to have to try to figure out. As we go. Yeah. When Mark Spector first awakened at the foot of Conchu's statue, uh, it was ambiguous whether his survival was truly Conchu's doing or if Spector merely attributed uh, everything that had happened to the moon god. Later, stories introduced Conchu as an undeniably real god 
employing Moon Knight as his agent. Subsequent takes on Moon Knight, however, would attempt to walk back that revelation that Khonshu was real, once again questioning whether the drive to be uh, the Moon Knight's, the Moon Knight of Vengeance was all in his head in the first place. So, essentially, <laughs> go, yeah. It's complex, bro. Series, it, is, it is complicated. complicated. We have many runs with many comics saying many different things. One saying all of this is in his head. The other saying, oh, this is a god that is actually sending Moon Knight out to work. So which route will the series go? I think that's the most interesting part for me. I, I think they need to simplify it. I think that, they, Absolutely. you know, the idol, they need to have the idol. Sure. They need to have the moon god, the Khonshu. And he needs to be sent out. And the voices, you know, that, that portrayal of him as a kid hearing the voice. Yes. But then him dying in Egypt with the Bushmen. And yes. them laying him at the foot of the Conchu idol. I think that we need yeah. to see that. The God I, yeah. That sounds like the origin story that we're all, you know, kind of going towards. All right, so I'm going to continue on Austin's part of personality, and we're going to go into abilities and powers, and that's pretty much it on this. So presently, it seems as if Mark Spector is both mentally ill and an agent of higher power, if you will. Conchu does exist and has chosen Mark as his avatar, but Mark's mental illness sometimes causes him to experience conversations with a Conchu that is only in his mind, not with the actual God. So he's hallucinating wow, schizophrenia tricky. there. There are also uh, discrepancies over whether Mark Spector was already a schizophrenic or disassociative from an early age, making him a convenient host for Conchu because where he's mentally ill... Well, we can just be uh, basically a, 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 a virus and attack his mind in, in a way. So, Or if Conchu has imposed his mental condition upon Mark. That's interesting. Did Conchu cause this disassociative personality disorder? A lot, man, there's a lot of things to unpack here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, Conchu is a god of multiple facets. And Mark Spector has taken on multiple identities in the past in order to properly represent all aspects of this god. Now, this includes his original alter egos as Stephen Grant, Jake mm -hmm. Lockley, and Moon Knight, and uh, representations of uh, Captain America, uh, Wolverine, mm -hmm. and he's even portrayed himself as Spider-Man in the <laughs> comics, uh, communicating with him, or a recent set of identities and attire like Mr. Knight. The pictures you will see of Oscar Isaac without the Moon Knight attire, but he's in a white suit and a white mask kind of doing this thing. That's Mr. Knight. That is Ooh. another. So we will see Mr. Knight. We will see uh, Oscar Isaac's Mark Spector. We oh. will see Moon Knight. We will probably see Jake Lockley as the cab driver. We've seen, and we will probably see, um, who's the other one here? Uh, uh, there's another, oh my God, there's so many. I, I can't even begin. Unlike most superheroes, Moon Knight is willing to brutally hurt and maim yeah. his opponents. That's and God. sometimes has even killed his enemies as is seen by his ripping the face of Raul Bushman or <laughs> carving crescent moons in his victims' foreheads. Oh, So, my spoiler alert, has even killed enemies as in seen by ripping off the face of Bushman. So he Hi. did. So, okay. little, this is comics now. This is not the show. All right. So, abilities and powers. We're going to unpack this, and then Lindsay is going to give you some trivia. I Over like the course it. of his life, uh, he was a boxer. He was a U.S. Marine, mercenary, costume superhero. Mark Spector has become an expert at hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques and various martial arts. Now, he is an Olympic-level athlete and skilled acrobat and gymnast and excels as a combat strategist. His only weakness is brain damage and mental illness. His mind is his biggest enemy. Wow. Now, his laundry list of abilities include, but not limited to, the following. I hope you guys are sitting down for this. Take notes, all right? <laughs> He's an expert pilot. He's an expert detective. He's an interrogation expert. Master marksman sniper. Weapons master. Master of martial arts judo. Uh, Screma, karate. Uh, Moite. Uh, Kung fu. Krav Maga. Uh, Sila. Uh, Dambe, uh, Savate, and Pressure Points. He can literally make you fall to your knees by hitting your shoulder in a pressure point. Dude. Multilingual. I think he speaks up to five languages. He's resistant to pain, insanity, torture, and can simply shut off his mind from all pain. At a it's just gone. He's also telepath resistant. 
Having multiple personalities helps him thwart off mind control because he can just literally go to another realm into another body and be another person sure. while he's being tortured at sure. the same time. Yeah. Strength, uh, under the light of the full moon, Spectre can lift easily two tons, according to the Marvel Encyclopedia. Good on grief. a full night, on a full moon. It's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> so there's a little That's bit a of a lot. laundry list. That's some Man. of his powers. So when the full moon is out and this dude's prowling, he's probably at his maximum strength and capacity. Man, that's crazy. Uh, recorded entertainment in the chat asks, is this going to be MCU canon? Do you guys we know? don't know what part of the MCU... Uh, what, that's the reason we're doing Orton's story. We're giving you the, the comic basis of Mark Spector. Yeah. And so when the show airs in 10 days from now, we can come back to this episode and be like, okay, that yeah. they pulled from that. There's Bushman. There's this. There's Jake Lockley. There's 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 Mister Knight. We we know kind of the the gist. But Lindsay's well, got, and, got the fun part. His, of it. Yeah. In, in, in just one quick little thing in this the the past bits that we've just read to y'all, there's a lot of reference back to having relationships with the, the Defenders. Right. So yeah. if the Defenders are considered canon, I would think that this would tie in that way, which is kind of a roundabout way of doing it because it is still a series. It's not a it, movie. Um, it's not going to be. Direct. Just to tag onto that, Lindsay, I, I, the director yeah. of Moon Knight went on to say this week, I believe it was the last week, that currently Moon Knight is not associated with any of the MCU characters. This is an origin okay. story. Mm -hmm. um, it's just literally, it's like a Tony Stark Iron Man origin story Yeah, uh, that we're getting. And so it's where he's going to go from the end of this series very well could end up for Heroes for Hire nice. with Luke Cage and I. I like yeah, that. I think so. I like um, that. It could very well go that route. And if it does, that's going to be awesome. It's going to be crazy. So, cool. Lindsay, you got right, some guys, cool got nuggets for you. Of, couple of trivia nuggets so uh you know the next time you go on trivia night you'll have some ammo in your back pocket there. Moon night knowledge <laughs> all right moon night knowledge <laughs> here we go all right so he is actually a non-practicing jew cool. uh jokes to, he likes to joke to other people that he is a pagan christian compatible <laughs> that is his relation his religion status yeah, that's good that's pagan great. christian compatible that's good um, every Hanukkah, Mark received a card from The Thing. Ben Grimm sending him Hanukkah cards. He's so nice. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. great. Oh, my gosh. Um, he is combined with Spider-Man to become the Almagation Arachnite. Almagation Arachnite. Arachnite in the 2018 comic Infinity Wars. Oh, my God. Think the Iron Spider, but with Moon Knight powers. Ooh, that's 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 not friendly neighborhood spider. No, at that's, all. that's that's going to tear some stuff up. Right at there. all. Uh, Spectre has died twice uh, between being and, you know, he died between being resurrected by his buddy, the god Khonshu. Sure. So know, he's, he's, been, he's dead twice. So he's been killed twice. OK. Uh, in the comic book story Arc Avengers versus X Men, Moon Knight took the side of the Avengers. I remember you. Oh, yeah. Nice. Instead of because they were fighting his god, and his god went a little crazy. Yeah, got a little wacky. Yeah. Well, can't you crazy? All right. And in 1999, Moon Knight Volume Four was nominated for Favorite Limited Series by the Comic Buyer's Guide Fan Award. There you go. So it must be good. It's uh, it's <laughs> complex. It's a complex story. Yes. But it uh, you know, it's very dark. So very that horror. ends it. So that's the end of, of of Mark Spector's origin story, Moon Knight origin story. So you know, all three all three of us here in the panel and all of the people in the chat, you're going to hear these familiar names. I'm sure in the series to come, you're going to come back to this episode and you're going to be like, okay, they they talked about that. They talked Check about the boxes. Yeah, you you got it. So I'm interested to see how much of this is going yes. to be adapted to screen. Yes. Um, so that's a beautiful thing about these origin stories. We don't know yet. So. I, I think that's one of the things I love the most about doing this series is um, being almost prepared mentally going in. Yeah. I, I feel like you get more out of it knowing that backstory a little bit yeah. better. And Moon Knight is a lesser known character in the MCU. So he's not someone like Spider-Man or Banner or Stark. You're, you're, you know, everybody knows that story. Yeah. But yeah. somebody specific like Moon Knight... And that's why we're here at Pop X, and we're going to continue to do this. 
Uh, there's going to be characters coming out of Miss Marvel and things, and we have mo- many more opportunities to unpack. Uh, we may even do a Morbius one. I'd love to do a Morbius one, but uh, we'll see how that goes uh, because i got to be out of town the week Morbius is going to be on screen, but Aww, we'll talk about that later. Okay, I know. But uh, if you guys enjoyed origin stories, we would love to know what you guys think. I know it's a little lengthy. There's a lot of dialogue, but there's a lot of meat and potatoes in here that's going to help you guys. So when you go and you watch the show, you're going to be definitely be in the know on a few things, and says, specifically names and identities and abilities for sure so you're going to come back and you're be like i know that <laughs> thank you pop x but uh if you guys if this is something you want to see in the future please let us know we were so excited to be able to put this together for you this week and uh we're we're just uh we we can't wait for this series and oscar isaac's performance as moon knight it's going to be uh, truly awesome and I uh, can't wait to unpack this series right here on Popex Cast as well. Uh, any closing thoughts or anything, Austin or Lindsay, you have? Any questions about uh, Mark Spector or Moon Knight or Disney Plus or whatever? I just have to marinate on all this information now. <laughs> it is a lot. <laughs> I, I'm curious to see how they integrate this into the larger world, though. Do they focus on more of the street level heroes, or do, is this their way of? you know, bringing in Blade for the first time. Because mm. uh, because those characters, they've interacted, right? We could get a Ghost Rider. We could get the return of John Bernthal's Punisher, man. The, yeah. the possibilities are endless. Yeah. But I do want to see a solid origin before any of yeah. that. So let, let's see what season one holds. That's it. That's exactly right. Well said. Well, with all of that, guys, we're going to wrap this episode up. 140 has been a banger, man. It has been packed yeah. full of goodness. Uh, Austin Burke, if you would be so kind as go ahead and roll us out. Um, we'll get this show wrapped up. Sweet, yeah. So many nerd nuggets in this episode. Right. Um, I'm Austin Burke at The Burkinator. You can search and find me and uh, hopefully talk in Moon Knight on my channel, but we're definitely going to talk about it more so on Pop X Cast. We are part of the newly formed creative group known as the Creative Multiverse. For more great media content, artwork, and more, find us on Facebook groups. And now, like we said, on the Discord at mm. the Creative Multiverse. Scan that little code. Get in that group. If you are a creative, produce content, or have a talent, we want to see it. We'd like for you guys to share it in the multiverse. That's Absolutely. Right. Uh, Pop X is also all over the social medias. You guys mm-hmm. can find us pretty much anywhere that's popular. Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter. I bet you there's even like a MySpace out there somewhere because, you know, Joe, make sure we're mm-hmm. in all the good spots. I'm there. Um, all those tags are going to be at PopXCast. And you can even send us an email if you want to. PopXCast <laughs> at gmail.com. And don't forget our website, PopXCast.com, for all the future past shows and all the awesomeness that you want to know about us is all right there in one spot for you. Yep. And Alicia, I want to be sure to highlight her comment over in the chat. She said, uh, this is really, really cool. She's like, I didn't know anything about Moon Knight, so this was helpful. Wow. Awesome. Let's go, Alicia. Thank you so much. Our job is done here. Our job is done. If you are the only one tonight, Alicia, thank you for (laughs) tuning in. But we know know better than that. Um, And so I'm still on Mandalorian. I can't get that out of my my head. Thank you, Poffenbarger. And I am Joseph Burke, a.k.a. at Joseph Burke Arts on social media. Quartz hats off to always amazing my team, Pop X. Lindsay Badger, awesome Burke. You guys are literally the spine and bones of what we do here. Um, But that's it for this episode 140 Pop X Cast. We'll see you next time in two weeks on episode 141. We probably won't do a Sunday night show. We'll probably do a midweek show, like on a Wednesday night. Um, Probably, uh, see, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Morbius comes out March 31st, is it? Yeah, I think so. March 31st? So So we'll probably have to do maybe like April the 5th or 6th. Because I have to be out of town in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The week in Morbius comes out. Woohoo. But I do want to make sure that we cover that episode and we cover that movie on Pop X Cast. So we will yes. schedule that. Um, probably tentatively looking, uh, I'll look at my calendar right quick. Probably looking at April the 6th will be our next show, which is about two weeks and four days out. Okay? Cool. So from all of us here at Pop X Cast, thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for being you. And uh, you know what? We'll see you next time right here on the Pop X Cast. We appreciate you guys so much, more than you know. Take care. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.
thanks for being a part of the PopX family. If you liked our show, please visit our YouTube page. Be sure to click subscribe and tap the notification bell so you'll know when we go live next. Visit our Discord channel by clicking the QR code on screen during our live stream or simply visit bit.ly forward slash creative multiverse. Connect with us on social media by using at PopXCast. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.